Now we want to find next we want to find a basis for this span. So if they're linearly independent, we have a basis. If not, we need to remove one vector at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a system of equations based on a 1, 2, 3 plus b 1, 1, 1 plus c 0, 1, 2. And it's going to give us 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2. We're going to set it equal to 0 because if 0 is represented uniquely, then we're linearly independent. If zero is not represented uniquely, I can find a free variable, which is the corresponding vector is going to be redundant. And I can remove all my vectors that are going to be redundant, meaning every time I remove that redundant vector, my span doesn't change. But once I, I can no longer remove a vector that is redundant, that means zero is represented uniquely and I have a spanning set. So if I do a bunch of eliminations, I get 1, 1, 0, 0. Now I get 0, minus 1, 1, 0. I get 0, minus 2, 2, 0. And we can see that uh, doing some more eliminations, we get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We see we have a free variable. xc is a free variable. If I remove this vector, I just have basic variables. My set of basic variables gives me my dimension. And taking the vectors that correspond to my basic variable allow me to create a spanning set. So the basis would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1. This is a valid basis. Now, suppose the characteristic polynomial of t, which maps c4 to c4, is x minus four, x, x squared x to the 4 minus 1 is t diagonalizable. Well, what we need to do is if we factor this, it might give us some help. So f of x equals, and now I see a difference of squares. So I'm going to see x squared minus 1, x squared plus 1. Now this here is, again, a difference of squares. But this is also a difference of squares. So it's going to be x squared minus 1, x squared minus negative 1, which gives me that it equals x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus i, x plus i, because the square root of minus 1 is i. Well, this tells me it's a product of distinct linear factors, or all of the eigenvalues, are, all the roots are different. And because we're going from C4 to C4, complex roots are allowed. So yes, T is diagonalizable. And let me just remove this annotation here. We're now going to be looking at, again, Cn to Cn, so complex linear transformation. Suppose that the characteristic is xn minus 1. Is it diagonalizable? Now, this is a little bit more complicated of a question. And what this has to do with is uh, I have x to the n equals 1. What are the roots of this expression? And the roots of this expression um, are really interesting. And it's kind of an extension-y question, something that I don't know if it would quite be a fair question on the um, actual final exam. But I wanted you to think about this, look it up. Um, and what you get is you actually get what are called the n roots of unity. And what you'll get is you'll get n different 
values, all of which lie on the circle. And each of these angles is going to be 2 pi over n. So this x n minus 1 is actually equal to x minus e to the i 2 pi, or is equal to the product of i equaling 1 0 to n minus 1 of x minus e to the i pi, and let's do j, j over n. And we get put a 2 up there, and it's the product of all of those values is quite interesting or another way of thinking of it is sine minus cos of 2 pi j over n plus i sine 2 pi j over we take the product of those values. If you go on to complex analysis, this is something that will show up a lot more. Again, it's not something I really ask on a actual final exam, but here, each of these roots, each root appears once. Because they each appear once, it is diagonalizable, right? Now, the last thing that we have is we have a linear transformation uh, going from R3 to R3, and we're asking, is it diagonalizable? Now, here, this is a difference of cubes. So f of x equals x minus 1 times x plus 1, or x squared plus x plus 1. And with this being a difference of cubes, what you'll notice is you'll notice that this does not factor into a product, or this, this expression does not have real roots. So because it does not have real roots, we only have one real eigenvalue. And the power of that eigenvalue is one. So the geometric multiplicity is at most one. So we only have one eigenvector or one vector. Um, the, the dimension of the sum of the eigenspaces is one, not three, which is the dimension of our vector spaces. This means that it is not diagonalizable. So no, we are not diagonalizable.